Hello and welcome to another video. Today I've got a different kind of video, I want to start doing some VOD reviews. Now, I'm thinking once I got my Discord all built up and constructed, whenever the day may come, I want to start looking at and reviewing your videos. So today we're going to go through one of my matches, I'm going to use a lovely pen to illustrate things that I'm trying to describe and show you some tips and tricks, but I know there's a lot of you who are still playing in Heresy and below, and we know the most fun in the game is in Damnation. We want to get as many people on the Auric level operations as possible, so I would like you to send me through your playthroughs so I can review them and help you improve your gameplay, decision making, positioning, etc. Let me know if this is an idea that you would like to do, and I'll work on constructing my Discord a lot faster in that case, <laughs> so that we can all jump into a little server and communicate a lot better together, and then, to be honest, I need to create Discord so I can jump into other people's Discords and join all the communities in general, really. But yeah, just let me know if this is something that you'd like me to do and that you'd like to take part in. And yeah, without further ado, let's jump into what I've got today. I'll be using my Psyker with an Antax Mark V Combat Axe and a Purgatus Flame Staff. Okay, we're going in. I've got my trusty Epic Pen here, so I can draw some illustrations on the screen to show you what I'm talking about and also demonstrate if I have any points I need to talk about as well. Right, just get rid of my little smiley face. And hopefully we can get you some educational tips and tricks and good advice on how to use the Psyker efficiently on Vigil Station Oblivion. So, originally, or immediately, we've got a lot of high-priority targets on the little ledge there. And we know that they're going to come up this ledge here. So it's, it's a good point to just back off a little bit. As we can see, there's a crusher down there as well. And so we know that they're going to jump up. And so it's good to just back up a little bit, charge your fire, and just launch it down the middle. I think your team usually just kind of sticks with you if you're ahead of them. And hopefully they'll stick at the top for the start of the map if they're ahead of you. Because it's, it's definitely a benefit to stay on here to deal with all of the heavy targets that are immediately on the map. Here they are, the big crushers. Now, we know they don't get damaged that much by fire, but there was a lot of enemies in the mixture, so it's good to just throw the flames through the ball. Because the AoE damage cannot be discounted. I always love to get rid of the, the barrels before the team can get to them, because it's just a liability for being exploded off the map, especially on this map at the start, as there is a lot of large areas you can be thrown into the abyss, and we do not want that at all. Just got a couple of large groups. It's a horde over in the distance, and so we're just going to get our lovely Purgus staff, and we're going to burn all of them. We do have some dogs coming in, and it's always important to remember that fire will stop dogs from lunging at you and onto your teammates as well. And even if they do get past the fire, like that one, if you get a tick of fire onto them, more likely than not, they will leap off you, um, or get off you in, a, in an attempt to kind of survive. So it's a good survival te technique for yourself to kind of burn them, regardless if you have the burger to staff, because it will stop them from uh, debilitating you and getting you killed. I want to make sure we handle that bomber as fast as possible, which we have done. Every time you hear that call out, you're going to want to make sure that you can listen in for where it's come from, and then you want to deal with it as fast as possible. You do not want that bomber to live, because that bomber will disrupt your team in a way that will end the run. Okay, we've got a little quiet period. It's sort of mixed as to whether you should stay inside or outside on this map. Got a couple of shotgunners we're dealing with here. It could have been a benefit to use our ultimate ability and then brain burst those two. Because fire does not stagger them. And so we didn't want to we want to make sure the team doesn't get injured. Got the horde coming from the top, but I'm just gonna pause for a second because well, I mean there's a bomber coming. And I think we can actually see the bomber right here. So gotta make sure that, that doesn't 
throw his bomb into us, because that be, could be bad with the horde coming. Especially as, if you noticed, if you heard it, the horde activation sound sounded more over to the right-hand side. And so it's likely that there's going to be a lot of the horde coming from the downstairs as well. So we need to make sure that we're aware of that. Um, usually the horde activation sound is or does give an indication as to where the horde came from or will be coming from. So it's good to listen in for that. Let's dive on, shall we? As you can see, I'm just paranoid and trying to be aware of where it may come from. Making sure we're throwing the flames up. And there we go, as you can see, they're going from downstairs as well. So we want to just move back, get into a choke point. Choke points are always the best place to be in. You'll just force all of the enemies into a tunnel. And you can kill them all really, really efficiently. Especially with a weapon like this one. Just want to make sure we handle the dogs. There's one in front of us as well. Yep, there he is. And easily handled. Yep, sniper. And it's gone. <laughs> got mutant coming. Terrible dodge of me. Luckily we've got saved by a... Uh, lovely Surge Staff. I forgot his name there for a second. So this section on the outside is the safer bit because there's a large, large lovely net that stops you from getting blasted off the edge or thrown off by a mutant or blown off by a burster. <laughs> or hitting barrels just like that. We want to make sure we avoid that. Go. And don't forget, it's it's always a good idea if there's a quiet time and there's shooters in cover to just get your brain burst and start dealing with them. Because they're quite hard to get to once they're ducking behind, but you can usually get the top of their heads and deal with them fairly quickly with brain burst in a very safe manner as well. So with this section of the map, I'm just going to wait until I get a nice view of the bridge. There we go. What we want to do is there's usually a load of enemies around this corner, hiding behind this area behind there. And there might be quite a few of them over here as well. So what we want to do, as a team, we just want to stick here because we've got this nice cover here. There's a Medicaid station here as well. And um, there's a little cover around to the left here, and we can always retreat to inside if we need to. But because the bridge is such a nice choke point area we just want to aggro everything to come down towards us here because we can deal with everything quite efficiently on this bridge usually things will walk towards us and it'll make it quite an easy time for the team in general and then it also gives you cover to deal with all the snipers which may spawn over here and they'll sh should be shooting you down this way and you can usually pick them off from the area just in the corner around here all right let me just get rid of my um scribbles and we shall continue onwards <laughs> just make sure I get brain burst on as many high priority targets as possible and we're sticking here for now always a collection hunter me jumping around the side there to get the loot got a dog coming on the right hand side and the heavy duty gear enemies coming through So it's a mixture of whether I should be using Brain Burst or my Perkins of Staff here. It's possibly better to use the Perkins of Staff as it would have staggered and suppressed a lot more of the enemies. And that was a very lucky hound kill. <laughs> I definitely didn't mean to do that. <laughs> but it's fairly quiet going across now, so just get your Brain Burst and kill as many long range shooters as possible. And that was a beast of Nurgle. So, a quick tip for this map is that whenever you are at this area of the map and you hear the beast of Nurgle, like, cry for her. Cry. I just say cry. <laughs> the beast of Nurgle spawn noise. There's more likely than not it's going to spawn through this door down the stairs. If it's a plague ogre, it's going to come from around the corner to the left. 
So you know if you hear that Beast of Nurgle sound, it's time to sort of hang back, maybe come in here, because you can pick it off. You can deal quite a lot of damage as it's coming up the stairs, so it's good to make sure that you can do that. So if your team runs backwards towards this entrance, you can do a lot of damage before it's even able to attack you. And that's a really good tip for this map. As we just heard, it's little guttural scream. It is indeed behind us. So, you'll find a lot of the time, people don't really know where it's coming from, and the team will kind of just wait on the bridge. But, as we can see, it's coming up the stairs, and that's just prime for some free damage. Which is always extremely useful, especially because the Beast of Nurgle can take quite a beating. You can see, we can hear we've got a lot of enemies coming through. The team's doing a very good job at dealing with them. And I got quite a lot of damage onto the beast, as you can see, so it's always worth jumping back if you can. If there's that quiet time, and just doing as much damage as possible to the beast as it's coming up the stairs. Because it's free damage. We're just burning the horde. The beast is having a, a great time with one of our teammates at the moment. We just want to make sure that we're not getting overran. And there we go. Easily done. Going to get rid of the bomber as fast as possible. And it's always worth using your ability to stop the bomber from throwing the bomb in the first instance. And then just popping his head with Brain Burst straight after. Because I think if you use Brain Burst on a bomber as he's arming, you will not Brain Burst him on time before he throws the grenade at you. Because the Brain Burst is too slow, so you have to use the ultimate ability. Which also makes him drop the grenade regardless. Which saves your team from a lot of trouble. Or potential trouble. Right. I'm just going to run through here. Bit of ammo up there for the teammate if they need it. We've got a sniper down the way. We don't want to deal with the sniper as fast as we can. And there's a possible dog coming through. Right here I got a little flustered. Wasn't really sure where it was coming from. <laughs> so just throwing fire into the distance. And then, got heavy duty units coming through. Again, it's another lovely choke point area. So, we can just bring down all the enemies from the end of here, straight to here. And we could just shove the fire into this area. And burn everything in sight. And that is exactly what we're about to do. There we go, we've got Rage just coming through, a couple of Maulers. And there we have them, easy pickings. There we go, dog coming through, and it's dead. And just getting rid of that barrel as well, but it also did some damage to that wall, so it's not all too bad. And we have a horde going through. We heard it was behind us, and as you can see, we've got a lovely grouping of them <laughs> running towards us from exactly where we heard it come from. They will probably spawn behind us as well, from the front of the map. But it's good to just know where the initial group's going to come from. That bomber, I could have stopped him there if I... I'm actually going to scroll backwards just to show you that when this bomber came through through the door here, instead of using my Purgatus Fire Staff, I should have really used my ultimate ability, as it's open right now, to be used, and it would have stopped him from throwing that grenade, it would have pushed it out of his hand, and then I could have brain burst him very quickly before moving on to deal with the Horde, or I could have used the fire after I used the ultimate to stop him from throwing it. So it's always, always, always worth stopping the grenade coming at you, because it can really pinch you and put you in a terrible position. So. Yeah, I'm just going to... I'm literally going to thrust that advice onto you as many times as I possibly can, because it's just so important. But let us continue onwards, shall we? Luckily this time, the fire ticked after Bomber, and the fire didn't, didn't do the team any damage. So here, throwing the fire into Scap Flamers and... Tox Flamers faces will stop them from shooting like within an instant, so 
if you need your team to get some space and there's flamers at you, you can just throw fire into their face and they'll stop attacking you, which is just incredibly valuable. So don't feel like you need to run at them and kill them with melee, even though you will kill them fairly quickly with melee attacks. Again, if I was aware of the bomber, could have used my ultimate ability to stop him. But then there's another one. But I think, let's see if I do it. Nope. Well, the team is quite far away, so we're in a pretty safe position. And we're just going to brain burst the burster, just because we can. Always best to push them if possible, but if they're in a very safe position, quite far away from the team, you can just brain burst them and it'll deal with them quite safely. Got a sniper in the distance. Always want to deal with the snipers if possible. Obviously, his head's just been popped by the... Actually think it was a veteran that has the pistol. Just got another nice peaceful little moment where we can breathe. And we've got a demon host ahead as well. Obviously going around to the right hand side because it's on the left. Though usually with this area, if there isn't a demon host, and there's a lot of enemies, it's good to bring everything through this door towards you, because there is obviously a lovely choke point right here, as you can see. And so you can usually bring a lot of the enemies from this room this way, and then you can deal with them and pick them all off in a very easily efficient manner right at this door. But equally, you can do it at this little area at the front because there's two barriers that kind of stop them from coming through. If I look at it, I'll give you a little lovely yellow demonstration. So it would have been much quicker to deal with that Reaper <laughs> with my brain burst, but I just wanted to beat him down. So we have two barriers that kind of stick out here, so a lot of the enemies will have to come through this choke point. So this is also a good area to come through because you've got cover through this room, got cover in this back area that I am, and there's a couple of giant boxes by the doorway as well that we can hide behind if we need to. So this is also quite a good area to stick with. And I'm, I'm sure there's a way to clear all of the illustrations on the screen. So I'm just going to figure that out. Control shift 7 okay. Right. I would have to click undo 500 times now. <laughs> It's a learning curve. We're getting there. And we've got a lot of gunners in the distance, so we just want to make sure that we can brain burst all of those. Gunners are always very, very, very high priority targets for you as a psyker, because the ability that they have to suppress you is unrivaled, really, in the game. You know, if you if you ever found yourself being shot at continuously by a gunner, you realise that you, your vision turns completely black and you can't see anything, as well as not being able to move. And so you don't need, you don't want yourself or your teammates to go through that pain, so you just need to deal with them as fast as you can. Here we go, just gonna get me a melee weapon out, beat down some enemies. This is only a couple of them, so I don't really need to use the fire. In this little room here, it's definitely more worth getting the Purgus fire out because it will, like the Flamers and a lot of enemies in the game, it will stop the Reapers from attacking and make them whimper in the burning flames of the Emperor. So, always worth just shoving fire into their face, which will stop them from shooting. Let them take a little bit of damage from the fire whilst letting the team finish them off if needed as well. See, I really wanted to get a brain burst onto that burst before it came round, <laughs> but I missed it, and so it was dealt with by the team. Got another horde coming in. I think that's, that's also a good little tip as well, that you can know if a horde's going through because it makes a, a distinctive kind of ambient sound. Have a listen. Then the 
towards the screen. Comes. And so you'll know before that that cry of the horde comes when a horde is on the way. And it just gives you a few more seconds, a few more moments to prepare for it. It happens, I'd say, 90% of the time, because some hordes are classed as ambushes. Whereas this one isn't. And of course we've got a lovely choke point in the door, so we're just going to remain here and burn everything through that little choke point. We've got a bomber, which sounded like it spawned from the right hand side. But at the moment we're very preoccupied. You can see I turned around there because I thought I heard it, but it, apparently it spawned likely down to the right hand side. So it looked likely spawned in the room which is down there and just kind of walked up towards us and then dealt with us that way. So, might have been a confusing call out. But we killed him in the end. So, this room... This is a very interesting room. So if I get a good view of it, I think I might just scroll back to see if so I can get a good view of the room, just from the very front of it. So... Come on, have a look. There we go. I'll do, pause it there. So... This room's difficult because it's very, very open. If there's a lot of shooters around the areas, you're going to get shot down um, quite quickly. Uh, I think there's a lot of elevated areas that they can lurk in as well. So what you're going to do... Oh, there we go. Cleared the screen. How exciting. <laughs> what you want to do, if it's packed with guys uh, and enemies... Again, you just can just aggro them from this area because you've got the cover of the little choke point behind you. And you can also, if you really want to, you can make it down into this room at the back here, though it is quite a small area. So if you get things like flamers or bombers, you can be uh, run-ended inside of this room, so you don't want to stick in there for too long. But here's a safe bet to deal with the bulk of the enemies on this ledge and up here, because you can take cover, you can fall back if needed and you don't have to run out into the open and get essentially just shot down by absolutely everything. So it's definitely a good tip once you get into this room. Stick at the top if you need to, aggro as much as you can to come up towards you. Deal it all, deal with it all really safely, rather than jumping at, just running straight through and just getting shot down. I think all of this advice really works more so for high intensity shot troop when you really need to deal with a lot of the shooters and a lot of the bulk of the enemies before you progress forward, or you can be overrun quite easily. Yeah. Not really sure which side of the map I would prefer to run down. The left does have a little cover by the wall, and the downstairs does have that room. But if you're down there, then the enemies will have the high ground. We know what happens with the high ground with Obi-Wan and Anakin. See, what I've done here is we've made quite a grave little mistake. Well, firstly, by attacking that barrel. But this corner <laughs> is death. You do not want to be in this corner of the map. Because these boxes, they're lying to you. This, this one box here gives you a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of cover. But it doesn't give you that much cover. Because these ones, you cannot crouch behind. And so they will just keep shooting your face. And you'll get killed. This little edge here doesn't provide you with enough cover. Because if they just come here, they'll just start shooting you. And if anything such as a mutant, a bomber, a flamer even gets close around here, you are you are dead. A bomber will throw a grenade from down here if it spawns down there. And you don't want that on you, so... Either what you want to do is run as far forward as possible straight into this room or at the door because then you can deal with everything at the choke point. You also have the cover of the walls immediately. Or you want to deal with everything a little bit further back because there's a little bit more cover further back. But you do not want to be stood in this corner because this corner is where you will die on runs. Luckily, I think I managed to survive it. But, as you can see, it is just a horrible space to be in. So we got those shooters in the area that can just shoot us from behind the supposed cover. 
and then everything just runs through, and then you just... There isn't a safe place for you to stand, really. And we've taken a lot of damage in that corner. A lot of damage that was completely unnecessary as well. Get out of my head. We've got a mutant coming through. We could deal with him. But yeah, we just want to run forward as fast as we can. Because this room will provide us with all the cover we need. A little bit of ammo, grenades, and such to gear up with. I think that's the first time I've ever jumped across rather than run round. <laughs> so, this is a lovely room, and again, as always, as you can see, we've got an amazing little door that we can bring every single enemy from down here to just come straight through. They'll jump up here like pillocks. And then they'll be very vulnerable because they do this, they're just vulnerable to dying when they're climbing up. And then we can just absolutely brutalize everything through this choke point. Obviously, Reapers and such are going to remain down there. So you can pick them off by just activating Brain Burst, then just dashing around the corner while it's finishing off. Jumping out, activating Brain Burst, Brain Burst, Brain Burst, dashing around the corner again. And just rinse and repeat till they're dead. Similarly with veterans and zealots, you can just get your range weapon and just fire weapons straight down that uh, area. So, just remain up the stairs, deal with all of the main enemies in a safe way. And just really leverage that choke point at the doorway. Out of my head. Yep, there's a load of shooters just below us. But they're all being stunned by the lightning. We've got a horde coming in. It's a lovely place for it to come through. Because there's only one way they can come at us. And I don't believe they will ever come from behind if you're close to the exit as you just jump down. So we can just stay here. And just deal with them with the fame. Fame? Flames? <laughs> and we do have a... A dual purgatus, so hordes are going to be extremely easy pickings. I did just take some extremely unnecessary damage. I'm going to scroll back for that because it wasn't wasn't really needed. But I did take as much damage as I thought I did. So in this situation, I'm walking forward, and we don't really need to walk forward here because the enemies are just coming to us. But I guess I'm just getting too eager. We're going to stay with the team a little bit further back and we can just preserve our lovely HP because I don't need to be that close to the enemies. But it does feel good to be that close to the enemies. <laughs> and the Tox Flamer has been terminated. So, there's usually a lot of enemies hiding away down here in this little area down at the bottom. But here, there is absolutely nothing. It's nice and quiet. So, you've got a little bit of tranquil time. But if enemies do ever spawn on the stairways around here, there might usually be some bulwarks, reapers, etc. There's also a stairway or a stairwell here as well. You can deal with the enemies on those stairwells, bring them up here, and you can deal with them on the choke point, which is always a lot safer. You might There might be a load of things hiding behind here. I think, I'm sure many of you have had squads of crushers just kind of burst out here as you run down, and this, this is the most unideal situation ever. And so it's always good to just bring everything towards that choke point and the bridge. Deal with them all. Happily clappily and safely. Same with here, you can bring all the enemies up this stairway. It is a kind of vulnerable area because you're vulnerable to being blasted off the map, being so close to the edge. But when there's groups of ragers, maulers, crushers, etc, you can just back up onto that stairwell and then it's easy funnel. It's an easy funnel for the fire to burn them all. 
As you can see, we've got a lot of bulwarks coming through. There's a dog that got stuck by the fire there as well. And it's just come past us. <laughs> we didn't recognise it coming past us in time, but it's been dealt with. A couple of flamers, you can see. They did not have a chance to spitfire at us because they were being suppressed way too much. Alright, now depending on how good the team is and the special conditions of the map, you should either run to do these as fast as possible if you're confident enough, or you should stick with the team and do them one by one. On Maelstrom, with the monstrous, monstrous specials, it's sort of more ideal to do it with the team, or at least in pairs, because the coherency bonus you get is just going to help you survive so much more. Okay. This little mutant needs to be dealt with. A couple of bits. To burn. And then we want to get back onto these scans as fast as we can. Because you don't need to be at these mission areas for as long as 80% of the, the teams I've been with have spent there. You just want to get it done and get out as fast as possible. Because the enemies will endlessly spawn here. So there's never really a time to breathe. You just want to finish it up so you're not wasting resource trying to survive. I am just going to pause it at this moment here. Because when you want to activate that, a new wave of spawns comes through. So a lot of the time you'll have a cheeky sniper that comes up chills around here, they might jump around the corner here, or they might come here as well. This can happen with also gunners, reapers, etc. You don't want to be stood in this really open, lovely plane where all of them can shoot you for free. Of course, this is not snipers. <laughs> And it's not Maelstrom with monstrous conditions. And so it may be easy in normal damnation, low intensity, hunting grounds. But most of the time you want to make your way into this lovely house. Because then one of the spawn points you've got instant access to. And you can peek around the corner to deal with all the enemies that are outside of it. And it will also give you that vital shelter you'll need from any snipers that want to spawn in and ruin your day. So, on harder special conditions, just you don't need to be stood at the elevator as it comes down. It comes down fairly quickly, but you're just leaving yourself open to taking free damage in this area. I'm just going to deal with that barrel. And I think, as we can see, we've got a sniper coming through. And we're just sitting ducks in this area. A couple of snipers. We, we are dealing with us all quite well, but you're generally just a lot safer once you're inside that little room. And I'm going to heal myself up while I'm here as well, since they put a medkit down. Why not? In the elevator we go. Always annoys me how you can't brain burst enemies once you're in the elevator. Like, why not? Let me be able to do it. <laughs> They're just there. So we've got a nice lovely moment here where through this grate you can shoot straight through into all of the enemies once this door opens. But, uh, as you can see, you can deal with a lot of it before the door even opens, but this room can be hell. Once you get up here, there's usually 10,000 Nurgle enemies all hoarded on this bridge. And there might be some around the edges here as well. So, the best way to deal with this, a lot of the time teams will stick inside the elevator and you'll just kind of get rushed in there. It's never really the best place to be because if you're in this elevator it gives you free 
or the enemy, it gives the enemy free views to shoot you all from this area, and that's where all of them will be. So you don't want to be in there. On the left hand side, there's a little area which is set back from the entrance, and it's got a nice, lovely wall to stop you from getting shot by everything here. And it also gives you a lot more space to kind of deal with anything that will spawn in the main bulk of the room. And then you can peek around the corner to deal with the shooters that are on the bridge. I'll see if I can... We'll, we'll see if I get around there, then I can show you what I mean. But it is that area there, I'm looking at it right now. This space is the safest place to be once you're in this room. In this area on this side, it's a bit too tight because you've got the giant... Uh, container and you will you can kind of get picked off easier in this corner because there's not enough room to run around it's also a little bit closer to the spawn point which is there as well but once you're here in this area specifically uh, enemies on the bridge can't shoot you you've got the cover of this specific wall here to stop you from getting shot by anything there even things at the immediate entrance of the bridge can't kind of can't quite see you if you're if you're against this wall and as you can see you've got an abundance of space to be able to shoot anything that's on this side of you behind you so it's the same for the mission where you come through this way and you have to defend the enemies coming at you from the bridge you can just stick around this corner and then you can deal, deal with everything there as well usually it's definitely more efficient to just shoot down the bridge as much as possible on that map but definitely 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 this little corner is a beautiful zone to be in, so utilize it. Because it will keep you alive, and that is the most important thing we need. Got a lot of enemies coming through. Just gonna get Brain Burst on the Bulwark as fast as we can. And we've got a Flamer, which is spawned behind us. And then we've got many, many shooters. As you can see, the person who's died has died in the middle where we didn't want to be. <laughs> kind of, I can't really go over how important it is to get into that left-hand corner. It will stop you from dying. Trust me. The enforcers watch the people. The arbiters watch the enforcers. Who watches the Inquisition? And that's the... Gunner and Reaper dealt with. Just a couple more shooters. We can deal with them all with Brain Burst. We want to make sure we kill the Flamer that just spawned behind us as well. There he is, and he's dead. And just finished the mutant. There we go. Happy days. Now, across the way, we run. The level of the design of this game is actually incredible, isn't it, really? <laughs> so, I'm just going to shove the fire down. You may wonder, why do you use the Burke as a staff against uh, Bulwarks? But it's always best, or it is really good to use it against groups of Bulwarks if they're in tight spaces and there's a lot of other enemies around them. Because once they attack, they open themselves to vulnerability and the fire just goes straight through them. And it does deal quite a lot of damage. But more specifically, when there's weaker enemies around them, it's going to pick off everything behind them as well. And that's the more important part. When they're more secluded, it's really best to just kind of brain burst them, get them deal with, dealt with as fast as possible. And if you're ever in a horde scenario where a horde's coming with them, just activate your ultimate ability and pick them off as fast as you can. Because you don't want them deal. You don't want to deal with bulwarks when there's a horde on top of you. So, good thing to know is if you ever hear the horde noise on this map, they'll all just barrel from this door. So it's very, very, very easy to deal with them from over here. Obviously, if you're on a high intensity shock troop or anything like that, it may just be best to go through this door because. If you get cut off inside this little area by any specialists, you're going to have a very hard time. But on easier modes, like just normal damnation, high intensity, maybe low intensity, anything like that, if there's a hole come through, 
you can just deal with them as they come through here very, very easily. No stress. Let us continue I'm onwards. Sure We've got a flamer we heard coming through, and that's a trapper as well, and a dog. <laughs> so, on this map, if you hear them all spawning while you're waiting in there, they're going to jump down these stairs here, or they're going to come through this door as well. So, it's it's good to just make sure that you know, um, or learn where the spawn points are, because it will save you. Because if you run through here without knowing that they're going to come from here, they're going to catch you off guard as you medicate, healing. They might chuck a bomb in there, might chuck some flames at you, then you've wasted one of the charges, and that'll make you sad. <laughs> and possibly ruin your run, so... It's good to just be aware of where the enemies are going to come from. And there he is. And the dog came through the door, through the way. And we've got one more flame through the door. We can just get our Medicaid and charge onwards. So, in this map at the end sequence, it's usually a mix up between coming through here. If you come through this way, you've got the cover of being indoors. You can go up the stairs, and then you're also, I think, mildly closer to the activation point, which is just about here. So, it is usually the safest bet to come through here. Though, if there are any bombers and such this way, you may want to come that way, because then obviously you wouldn't have to deal with those on the indoors. The left-hand side will also cover you from any snipers that spawn as well. You may be vulnerable to that on the right-hand side, but a lot of players, I think, opt for the right-hand side. I think there's probably a psychological thing of just about being in the open air <laughs> rather than being hemmed in. With all of Nurgle's beasts. And whilst they run to the activation point, we could just deal with all the trash that's coming up on the stairs. Stairs obviously providing really lovely choke points and, and funnels for your fire to really shine. going to activate these and we'll get going ah. <laughs> it's always the worst when they randomly spawn but good thing with the psycho if you have the right I that was a terrible decision for me there but <laughs> note to self don't blow up barrels when they're near your teammate but yeah so what just happened there was there was a dog on my teammate and it's good thing to know that I'm not 100% sure on the exact distance, but if your teammate is being mauled by a dog, they could be behind a wall, they could be a little, like, quite a distance away. If you use your ultimate ability as the psycho, it will push the dog off them. I'm not sure on the exact distance, but it is quite far, and it will go straight through walls as well. So if you're ever separated from a teammate and he's being mauled on by a dog, or he's in any sort of big trouble, you can just throw your ultimate in his direction and it will kind of blast off everything in a big cone and stagger them, and it'll give them space to either run towards the team or maybe deal with all of the threats that they're dealing with. So that's a very good tip. But I think in this instance, the burster actually pushed the dog off the teammate. So, the end of this map just has an abundance of funnels. So you can never go wrong with a perk at the end of here. And we just want to defend our teammate as they deal with the objective. <laughs> Fire and Rot's not consuming anything today, buddy. And we just want to... With the perk to staff and mutants you want to keep using the purgator staff if you have your teammates and there's a lot of stuff around the mutant otherwise you just want to switch to your melee weapon and just deal with them that way because you'll do a lot more damage with melee rather than burning with the purgator staff and we 
coming through to the bottom. I think it can't be understated just how well the Burgter staff gives space to the team. So if you just continuously throw it out there, you've got to provide so much space and time for people to breathe and be able to deal with things more efficiently. So the thing with the Psyker is a lot of the use of the Psyker is really just providing space and support to the team to be able to kill things effectively. You're never really the main source of damage when you're the Psyker. And so it's definitely a supportive role that allows the team to thrive. And he didn't make a warning sound before he attacked me. I'm pretty sure. No, <laughs> he didn't. I... Damn you, Fat Shark. <laughs> I was hitting him. Nah! Instead of hearing the weird windy sound before they hit you. So I'm going to blame Fat Shark for that one. <laughs> Got a lovely horde going through as we come here. Right, so this map right here, this is a lovely area to talk about. Because it, it is a difficult one, especially after changes they made, I think, maybe three patches ago, four patches ago. Enemies are going to jump down from here and also here. And they will catch you off guard if you're not ready for them. So usually we are used to enemies coming through the front two sections, but now you will get a lot of enemies coming from this back section here. And if you're not aware of them before they get to you, you're going to get overwhelmed in this room very, very quickly. So it's always... Excuse me, that was my alarm. A bit of elder <laughs> music. Um, you're going to get cut off and overwhelmed quickly if you don't deal with the enemies that are in this corner as they come down. And it's very easy to forget as you get preoccupied with all the enemies coming down the front. As you can see, I'm just paranoid about them going through. So I'm just checking and making sure they're not. It can be quite a delayed reaction from them. And we just want to... Use our ultimate ability, push the bomber so he drops his grenade. We do, do not want a grenade to be in this room. I think 8 times out of 10, the grenade doesn't make it into the room if they're on the staircase. But you do not want to take that risk. And bombers do cut off so much space once you're inside this room. It's just not worth it. As you can see, there's, there's another one hanging about, which is why I hesitated there. And we can hear him still talking and chatting to us. But we have a lot of enemies coming through the behind us. And a bomber, just as I expected, got one through the door. And it's just not worth it. Just the amount of space that it cuts off in this room, which isn't very big to begin with. You just need to deal with them bombers as fast as you possibly can. mission is ready to activate, but just dealing with this choke point. If you've got Pergasus on this map, it's always best if a, a member of your team that doesn't have area damage can do the mission objective, because you can deal with the choke points as like, tons of enemies come through very, very easy. Just checking down there to see if the sniper's anywhere. Because I'm very worried about it. It's not down here, so it must be down the front. And there he is. I'm just going to deal with him. Get him out of the way. It's always good having to check down the stairs, because that's where all of the specialists usually spawn. Apart from Rage's shotgunners, they spawn from behind you. So it's good to remember that. Nice we can hit. The Pox Bursters pinging a lot, but it's spawned at the bottom of us downstairs. So, yeah, as I mentioned, all specialists apart from Rage's shotgunners will spawn down the stairs. And there's the shotgunners. <laughs> so we just want to get our ability on staggering. Probably best using Brain Burst there, pick him up a bit faster. Oh wow, little sniper there. Thought he'd get his last shot on us. But yeah, usually on the highest and hardest difficulties, you want to be running as fast as you can here. 
hopefully we've got a bit of time, a bit of space to breathe, but it's not monstrous specials or maelstrom. So it's a fairly easy order. So in this room, which is the final room, if you are on Shock Troop Gauntlet, Maelstrom, or anything that is going to challenge you a lot, you need to be aware that enemies will spawn from this door. So if you're not running down here, they're going to come from up here, and they're going to really, really give you a hard time. So if you're just aware that enemies are going to spawn from this door, which is right next to the extraction point, you know, you're gonna have a better time if you just if you're aware that that's a possibility that can happen. Get through the door, and happy days, we made it. We survived for the emperor. Now let's take a look at the statistics, just because we can. And here we are. As you can see, got Team School, which doesn't really matter. Enemy Staggered. Wizard, which was the Surge Staff, obviously getting tons and tons of Stagger, as that stops everything in their tracks. It did a nice, decent bit of damage, and as we can see, well, that's a good point, actually. Our boss damage is very, very high, because if you remember right at the start of the map, and when the Beast of Nurgle was coming up, we started dealing with it whilst it was on the stairs. And if you deal with it while it's on the stairs, you're going to have a really, really good time with its health pool in general. Because it cannot attack you as it comes up here and makes its very slow way. So that's a good point to stress. If you hear a Beast of Nurgle spawn once you're at this part of the map, it's more likely not coming from behind you and you can deal tons and tons of damage before it's even able to attack you whilst, as it's coming up the stairs, slugging its way up. If we get back to this scoreboard, just take a peek again. Yep, got a lot of lesser kills as we had the Purgator staff, and we, we kept up with the team quite nicely on the specialists and melee and ranged elites. So yeah, that has been a different video with my lovely epic pen. <laughs> Definitely a different style video and one that I really want to tr try more of. And I was thinking once I get my Discord channel all built up, I would like to do some reviews of your gameplay and help you improve. It's, it's one thing going through my gameplay looking at bits and bobs I'm doing and seeing what I can do better, and then giving you tips and tricks as I go through it, but if I can get a hand of your gameplay, I can help you position better in maps, do helping with help you with your decision making, and all that good stuff. So if you let me know whether that's something you'd like me to do in the comments down below. I'm gonna draw it, here we go, you ready, you ready? And if you let me know in the comments down that way, <laughs> then we'll see if we can make that a nice little series because I know there's a lot of people that are not in damnation uh, or haven't aren't able to consistently complete damnation missions and so I mean I've been playing damnation for a very long time now even doing it as you may have seen with my level 18s and stuff like that so I think I'm in a good place to be able to give you the tips and tricks you need to be able to jump yourself into damnation and consistently remain there because heresy is not it's not really the game's the most fun you don't want to remain there you want to be in malice come on you want to be in damnation in the auric level operations that's where you want to be because <laughs> that's where the game is the most fun but i am going to leave it there for now and yeah i shall see you in the next video goodbye